Well, g'day, and welcome to Stu's Shed. Today's going to be quite an exercise. I'm going to run through quite a number of steps on the CNC as we uh, go through all the steps basically involved in making a, a product, right through from uh, the setting up of the computer in the first place, generating the G code that's going to be used by the CNC machine, router bit choice, multiple materials, right through to the end product. So it's, um, yeah, it's going to be quite an evolution. Well, to start with, we've got this fella here. And this is the one that I want to uh, basically reproduce. And because we've got the router bit set here, this is the uh, basically the, the CNC master collection from uh, Amana Tools, sold by uh, Tools Today. And it's an incredibly comprehensive set covering a whole wide range of materials um, plastics, aluminium, steels, timber, you know, man manufactured ma materials, uh, you, you name it basically, this router set will cover it. And so I'm going to use a number of those router bits uh, in, in today's exercise to, to actually generate this. Now, I produced this yesterday as a bit of a test, test run using acrylic, which is something I really hadn't tried machining before. And so I wanted to see what it would work out like. And secondly, I actually wanted a physical model to start making decisions about what parts were going to be made out of what materials. Now, the sorts of materials we're going to be machining today will be... Uh, actually, interestingly enough, I'm not going to focus on timber. i um, done quite a bit of timber on, the, on recently. I want to uh, use today to actually show some of the other things that we can work with on a CNC machine when you have the right router bits to use. Sorts of things I'm going to be working with include brass, you're probably getting quite a good reflection off that because it's uh, it's very very shiny. It's a um, very nice looking material that one. Aluminium. Well, we've all seen aluminium, so I won't show you that for a second. I've got um, copper. We've got our various plastics such as polycarbonate. And this one here is uh, it's a solid green by the look of it. I'm going to leave the protective covering on it at the moment because that actually helps with the the machining operation. Uh, just to basically stabilize it on the top and the bottom surface but you can just see a little bit of a corner there and if I can find a use for it if I can find a particular point to uh, to include it I've even got some of this now this is carbon fiber <laughs> and it's not very cheap um, I've actually bought this sheet this is 0.3 mil thick and um, so I just wanted to basically do a bit of a test and look later on down track. I might actually get some that of a decent thickness, you know, sort of like three millimeter thick uh, material that I can actually use as a component. Um, in this case, this will possibly be used as a bit of a detail piece. I'll either do some insert with it or, um, no, I'm not quite sure yet. I'll actually work it out as I go along, but it, it's, it's very cool just to have some of this material. And it'll be very interesting to see how it machines. I do have a number of other materials to also cover. Uh, it may not actually be covered in this video, but we'll cover it over the next couple of videos, which will include Corian. Um, I've got foam, we've got timber, we've got melamine. Um, I've got uh, core flute, uh, perspex, got MDF and got timber, obviously. So there's a, a huge variety of, of materials that we can actually work with on a CNC machine. And as I say, once you've got the, uh, the right router bit, then you're pretty much uh, set up to do whatever you want with them. So to start off this evolution, the very first thing I need is a very good reference surface. In this case here, I've secured a piece of 32 mil MDF to the top of my working surface. And it's, the thickness is not so much so important, although it gives me plenty of, of capacity to machine the surface down, damage it, um, smooth it back off and keep going for quite a while without actually having to remove it or or anything so that's why i've started off with a nice heavy piece um it also provides a bit of uh, extra stability not that my cnc machine actually has any issue with stability whatsoever the uh the torx cnc machine is a solid solid beast as um you would have seen before in previous videos and as you'll see again in this one However, the very first thing I need to do, and this is true for any CNC machine, is we want to make sure that the surface of the, um, our bed 
in this case the top of the MDF is actually parallel with the the top beam of the um, the CNC machine itself and therefore when we move the cutter over the entire area that there isn't any point where it, it drops away or slopes away uh, even sloping away by half a millimeter can cause quite a bit of a um, a change to what you're trying to do depending on the on the job you're doing so having a really good flat and parallel reference surface is uh, is vital for good CNC operations so what I'm going to do is uh, break out the first of our router bits in this case it's going to be a surfacing bit or what's also called a spoil board bit This is a spoil board bit, it's the mini insert CNC spoil board bit, uh, RC2250 from Amana Tool. It's a very interesting uh, configuration because it's not only has it got the, the normal cutter orientation there, it's also got these two flat pieces which are don't, basically going to do a shaving cut to produce a very smooth, flat and feather free surface and uh, try saying that three times feather th free <laughs> can't say it twice um, obviously also using re replaceable carbide bits and these can be rotated four times to get a new new surface each time as uh, each surface dulls off and then it's very cheap and easy to replace those carbide surfaces as you need to so i'm just going to screw that into the spindle Insert the router bit. Do it up nice and firmly. And uh, it's good to go. So now I need to get back to the project at hand. Now, now that I've got a, a perfectly referenced surface, 
what I'm going to do is go back to the computer, I'm going to edit up the, um, the file to choose which components we're going to make out of which material. And I'll mount the first material up, we'll cut those bits out and uh, just rinse and repeat till we work our way through the, the whole lot. So I've just opened up Aspire, this is a, uh, this, some of the main software that comes from, well basically some of the main software that's actually used out there on the, uh, in the marketplace, it comes from Vetric and uh, Aspire is uh, the full 3D, um, basically the program that you use to create the code for doing three-dimensional routing or three-dimensional CNC routing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just click on create a new file. Well, now we choose our material sizes, in this case I'm using a piece of material which is 600 by 600, it's 3 mil thick. I'm going to set my X, Y and Z point to this front right hand corner. Now the reason for doing that is because this is the closest corner to where I'm standing and it makes it easy then for me to align the tool to that point. Now if I was going to use some other types of material or different sizes and I just wanted to use a, a, a scrap or something like that, then I'd probably reference off the centre and do a centre line one. But in this case I've got a good reference point in the corner to, to start my uh, start working from. I'm just going to click OK. I'll just get my... I'm just going to scale it out for a second or zoom it out. Just because when I add the um, the full model, it's going to be larger than the, our working area. So I'll just go into File, I'm going to import a vector. Choose my plans, in this case I'm choosing the dragon. Go into the DX XF codes, router, millimeter, and I'm choosing our three mil design. And here it is here, looking as I said a lot larger than the, the actual working area. Now before I get into it, I'm actually going to remove all the components that I don't want to have this colour. Now the colour I'm going to start with is the solid green. Now I've got my design, I've got my plans, and I've chosen which components are going to be cut out of... I've chosen the components I'm going to have cut out of different colours and I've marked them all, all up. So now I'm just going to go through and select the ones that I actually want. I'm just going to put them to one side. And while I'm going, I'm going to delete everything that is not going to be that colour. Okay, so I've identified all the components that I want to have in this green plastic. Now rather than me trying to move them around and fit them on the screen, what I'm going to do is highlight them all. I'm then going to move over here to the nesting option. Now, I've set the tool diameter larger than what I'm actually using in this case and more, a little bit more clearance just because this is quite a brittle material and I just want to make sure that although um, I want to sort of optimize the amount I actually use it I don't want to um, get it so close that they end up breaking. I'm going to nest from that corner along the y-axis I'm going to preview that it will then do a quick analysis of all the parts and then we'll try to group them onto the material, making the best use of the material that, uh, that I have available. In this case, I have more than enough to, uh, to do the job. Right, and there we can see that the layout gives us plenty of clearance around each piece, but it's still giving us uh, quite a bit of um, spare material. So I click OK onto that. Now I'm just going to highlight them all again, and now I'm going to go and generate the toolpath. Now I'll just pin my menu open, so it doesn't keep opening and closing, which I find very annoying. In this case I'm going to choose a profile toolpath, because I'm cutting around each of these objects. Starting depth at zero, that's fine. Cut depth, four mil. In other words, I'm going to actually going to cut right the way through the plastic into the backing board by about a millimetre or so. Um, just to make sure that we get a good clean uh, cut and we don't sort of leave the pieces 
almost cut free but not quite. We'll choose the the tool we're going to use in this case I'm going to select now we're using an eighth inch diameter which is 0.125 inches now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cheat slightly actually change it to millimeters so we can see what's going on I'm going to make it 2.95 millimeters with a pass depth of 2 mil. Now the feed rate's way too high. Now I'm going to drop that right back down to 10 millimeters a second and with a plunge rate of also 10 millimeters a second. That's about right. Now the reason I'm going slightly under is because the plans can be that close in their tolerances that if I don't fake it slightly with the uh, the actual diameter, it may not do the in individual slots that we need to do to uh, for the parts to join together. Apply that, click OK. Go into Edit Passes. Now I can see that it's going to do a depth, pass depth, one cut at 2mm and the next one at 4 Now, it should be alright. I'm going to go OK on that. Direction, climb is fine. That's okay. Now we're going to add some ramps to the tool path because again we're cutting into plastic and I don't want to try and plunge the bit straight down. I actually want to ramp it down into the material slightly. Um, I'm going to do it over a short distance. I'm going to do it over um, about five mil should be all right. That's fine, and I'm going to add tabs to this as well, just so each part is well in, is, is held in place while um, we're doing the cuts. Now I'm doing a four mil uh, length of tab, four mil thick. Now don't forget a millimeter of that's already lost because we're actually it's assuming that we're going down to four mil, and the material is only three mil thick. I'm creating a 3D tab because that makes it quite easy to break these loose after the fact. Now go into Edit Tabs now. I don't like how the program uh, assigns tabs automatically, so I'm going to add my own tabs manually. And I'm just going to choose a couple locations on each component where it's supporting the material nicely. Oh, let's remove that one and move it. So it's supporting the material nicely, but also somewhere that I can then machine it away easily. So. For example, this one here I'm putting on the outside of the curve, it's very easy to get to. If I put this one on the inside here, it would be very difficult for me to sand that one away, or harder, so I'd rather not put it in there. And the last one is there. Okay, that looks like all the tabs are done. Let's close that. And I then calculate, and this is now going to calculate the path. Now the one thing it's telling me, I'm going to be cutting all the way through my material. That's good. That's exactly what I want to have happen. There is the, uh, the profile. Well, sorry, there's the, uh, the tool path. We can preview that if we like. As beneficial as that is. Close that. I'll just click on that tool path again. Save it. Save tool path to file. I've got a location that I put these sorts of things. So I'm going to put this three millimeter drag on green I'll call that one and that's all I need to do in Aspire so I'll just close out of that and the next thing we'll do is we'll open up the actual controller software and then load that file up alright so I've moved over to the UC and C software and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, uh, well, before I start, um, I've actually already clicked the reset button. I'm just going to click on Home All just to make sure the machine knows exactly where Home is. Alright, 
now I'm just going to bring the, uh, I'll manually jog the machine over to the front area. And I'm just going to change to the correct tool. Let's take this off. So the router that I'm going to use now is this one here. It's a 51411. It's a 1 8 inch router bit, quarter inch um, shank. It's got a half inch cut length and it's designed to give a mirror finish with an upcut in plastic. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Drop the collet off, take the insert out, which is the half inch one. I'm now going to just put in the quarter inch. Insert the router bit, so it's got plenty of meat inside the, uh, the collet. Do that up firmly. Alright, now I'm just going to get this out of my way for a second. So I can mount up the board. Now, as I said before, I'm going to leave the, the wrapper on this. Just because it provides a little bit of extra uh, support to the material. Lay it down. Now, I've actually already got a couple of holes drilled in it. So I can just screw that down straight to the... Uh, my sacrificial board. Now as I said earlier what I'm going to do is I've used that front uh, right hand corner as my reference point. So I'm just going to jog the machine over to there to zero the, the cutter to that point. Alright, so I'll just bring the tooling over. Get it close. Now I'm going to zero all that, and then what I'm going to do is actually just move the cutter over a little bit into the material, and then decrease my jog feed right down, so I can zero off the, the z-axis. Zero that. I'm just going to then just lift that up out of the way. Okay, that's all set, ready to go. Now I'll just load my file. Which in this case was a 3mm Dragon.
So that's the end of the, uh, the first run, first material, first colour even. I'll just home the machine again just to get it out of the way, clean that up and then we'll have a look at what, uh, what we've just had to produce. So I've had a couple of pieces pop loose already, but um, that's the, the first pass. And most of them are, um, are there, they're only held in by quite small tabs, so it'll be very easy for me to remove them. So what I'll do now is just off camera, also I'll, uh, I'll just pop each of them out. I'll take the paper covering off and then just give the, um, the edges a, a quick touch up on the uh, disc sander just to get rid of where the tabs were. For this next job we're going to now change over to aluminium and it's uh, not a material I've done much, pretty much any work with on the, uh, a CNC machine before so this will be quite an experience for me as well. Going to change the router a bit over, we're now going to now let's just choose the right one. We're going to this one here, which is 51474. It's a 1 8 inch diameter, uh, quarter inch shank, and it's also got a quarter inch cut length. Now I'm going through a reasonably short cut length, um, again, because I don't want to, well, I'm not quite sure how it's going to perform, so I don't know how much load I'm actually going to be putting onto the cutter um, with the settings I've chosen. So if I go for a short cut length, then it's, um, it's basically just doesn't have that much um, doesn't have that much opportunity to flex uh, unreasonably if I've chosen a setting which is a little bit faster. In saying that, I've gone for quite a low speed. Um, I've chosen 10 millimeters per second again, and it's still running at 12,000 RPM as the, um, the route is still at that fixed speed. So with router bit 51474, which is the 1 8 inch aluminium um, routing bit, uh, we've managed to cut all these out very, very successfully. And uh, again, what I'll do now is I'll pop them free and uh, just give them a quick tidy up. So very successful. And then now I'll move on to the, uh, I'm doing the same thing with brass. It will uh, it will use the same router bit to, to do brass. It's, um, yeah, it's all those non-ferrous metals are done with, the, uh, with that set of router bits. So, um, no, but very, very successful, which is excellent to see. Thank you. 